everyone, my name is Gabrielle Santiago and today I'll be doing a teaching on how to have unwavering confidence. Confidence isn't a look, but it's an identity. It's who we are in Christ. Listen in and you'll learn how to have unwavering confidence. So today I wanted to start off with sharing the definition of confidence. Confidence is the feeling or belief that one can rely on someone or something. So the world teaches us to have confidence in ourselves, but God teaches us to have confidence in Him. While it's okay to make sure that you look good and that you're prepared, however, at the end of the day, we have to make sure that our confidence is solely in the Lord. And the reason why is for us to have unwavering confidence, which means to have confidence despite what we go through, no matter our circumstances, we have to be able to have confidence in God. Why? Because we aren't enough to sustain our own confidence. There are going to be days where we just don't feel good enough, days where we just wake up on the wrong side of the bed, days when we don't feel beautiful, you know, whatever it may be. But with God, we can have full confidence that we can trust in Him, that He has a great track record, that we can know that He is faithful. And so the key to have unwavering confidence is to have confidence in the Lord. Now, like I was saying before about how we aren't enough to sustain our confidence, when we go into scripture, the Bible is so clear and it constantly reminds us to look to God, right? Um, For example, a verse I wanted to share is from Proverbs 3, 5 to 6. It says, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not in your own understanding. In all your ways, submit to him and he will make your path straight. So in that verse, we can see already, it says, trust in the Lord and not on your own understanding. So for here, we already see that God is reminding us the importance of putting our trust in the Lord and not in ourselves. Another great verse is Psalm 62, 6. It says, truly, he is my rock and my salvation. He is my fortress. I will not be shaken. And so when we make God our foundation on where we stand, we can be sure that we won't be shaken. Like guys, it's possible. I understand that it can can seem impossible. Like how can I always have this kind of confidence? And the key is to have confidence in the Lord because he is stable. He is firm. And so many scriptures remind us that we can trust our lives and our safety in the hands of God. So now that we understand that our confidence needs to come from God, I want to share with you guys five tips and how to build confidence the right way. So the first thing is, instead of looking on the, looking the part, be the part. A very key here is um, many times we try to just look the part, right? Like focus on our beauty, focus on what we're wearing. Now, all those things are great, but we have to make sure that we don't identify ourselves by what we wear or by our makeup. And we're not trying to conceal things. Instead of viewing beauty and makeup and wanting to conceal yourself, view it, view it as a way to emphasize and accentuate the features that God has created you to be, right? Because Psalms 139 Verse 14 says, I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful. I know that full well. We have to have a firm identity and who we are in Christ and knowing our true beauty that comes from him. And instead of focusing on looking the part, focusing on being the part, right? If you know that you are beautifully, wonderfully made and that the Lord has created you, right? With confidence, you can then dress to, uh, to compliment right? The confidence that God has given you, the beauty that God has given you. And so makeup and all these things um, with, you know, fashion and whatnot, that's really meant to compliment you. And that is going to help really boost your confidence when you focus and understand who you are in Christ. Because like what I was saying before, confidence isn't a look, it's an identity. It's knowing who we are in Christ, Right, in Jeremiah 29, 11, God says that he created us to prosper, right? Not to harm us, but to give us a hope and a good future. So if we know that we were created to be successful, we can dress and look the part, right? And it's meant to only ac- to complement who we are. Proverbs 31, 30 says, Charm is deceptive, beauty is fleeting, but a woman who fears the Lord is to be praised. If we are a woman who fears the Lord, then that means that we are to dress as a woman who fears the Lord, right? Dressing and, and, you know, with purity, with modesty. And so all these things is meant to accomplish, you know, who we are in Christ. And the beauty of it is when we focus on being the part and focusing on who we are in Christ, it's, we, we can walk in such confidence that really comes from the Lord. That's not like created because it is who we are. It is who we are in Christ. 
Um, so the second thing that I wanted to talk about is instead of affirming yourself, affirm who you are in Christ, right? There's a difference in affirming yourself versus affirming who you are in Christ. When we realize that we are and our strengths all come from God, we can walk out in that confidence knowing and, re and reminding ourselves that we can only be where we are today because of God. Right. Um, yes, we are wonderful and beautiful people <laughs> and we have amazing gifts and talents, but all of that comes from God. And Philippians 1, 6, it says, being confident of this, that he who began a good work in you will carry it on to completion until the day of Christ. Right. So there's two key things there in that verse. It says, one, we can be confident in God who began the good work in us. And the second thing is that God is the one who is going to bring it to completion, right? So guys, like we have to understand that the gifts that we have all come from God and it is God who is working in us, right? Perfecting us to become the woman who God wants us to be. And so we need to continue to focus in affirming who we are in Christ because guys, without Christ, we are nothing, right? We are nothing without Christ. And that's why... Um, in Romans, it says, in Romans 8, 37, it says, no, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us, right? We are more than conquerors through Christ. And at the end of the day, we have to also remind ourselves that we were all created for his glory. Isaiah 43, 7 says, everyone who is called by my name, who I've created for my glory, Right there, we can see that God created all of us for his glory. And so when we focus on God and, and who he is you know, to us, we get to see his beauty and his faithfulness shining through our lives and we can start trusting in his ability versus our own. So ladies, it's very important that we focus on affirming who we are in Christ versus who, you know, just instead of just focusing in ourselves. The third point that I want to share in helping you build confidence the right way is instead of comparing yourself to others, focus on appreciating the gifts that you have and appreciating the, the gifts that others have, right? Because when we play the comparison game and we try to compare ourselves and try to find a reason that, that of how we're better than others, that's really like a false way to boost our confidence. Instead, that shows that we have insecurity, right? When we need to compare ourselves and we need to feel like we're better than someone, that only shows that we're insecure. But the reality is there is no such thing as someone who is better than someone. We may be better at certain gifts or certain, certain talents, but there is no such thing as someone being better than someone because we all need each other, right? God reminds us in the Bible that we are all part of the body. We all work together to be one. We all need our different talents and our gifts to be able to accomplish, right, the kingdom of God and his tasks that he has for us. There's no such thing as one person accomplishing all, right? We're not like none of us are Jesus, right? We all need one another. And so the scripture that I wanted to share with you guys is Romans 12, three to five. It says, do not think of yourself more highly than you ought to, but rather think of yourself with sober judgment in accordance with the faith God has distributed to each of you. For just as each of us has one body with many members, and these members do not all have the same functions, so in Christ, though many form one body and each member belongs to all the others, we have different gifts according to the grace given to us. And so I love what Paul is already saying there. He's saying, guys, first of all, like don't think more highly than you ought to, right? And then he starts talking about how like we have been, each of us have been deposited with a certain amount of faith, a certain amount of gifts, right? And that we all are a part of one body. And so instead of trying to compare yourself to boost your confidence by seeing, you know, like, well, I'm better at this and making yourself feel better. Instead, appreciate the gifts that each of you have, right? The strengths that everyone has because we all have different gifts and we were all meant to work together. And so as we start focusing on on the body as a whole and everyone else's gifts and talents, we actually start boosting our own confidence because we start seeing the beauty of, of everyone, not just ourselves, but every other person that we get to work with. And so remember that comparing yourself will only kill your confidence, right? And so focus on the gifts and appreciate the gifts that God has given to all of us. The fourth thing that I wanted to talk about is instead of hiding your weakness, acknowledge your weakness. Because the fact is we all have weaknesses, right? Everyone does. Even the, the disciples, right? In scripture we read, right? In the Bible, like everyone has weaknesses. And instead of hiding those weaknesses, you know, 
acknowledge them, right? Because when we hide those weaknesses, we are ultimately living falsely, which will only hurt our confidence, right? Because we know that we're hiding something when in reality, we don't have to hide our weaknesses. That's why um, Paul says in 2 Corinthians 12, 9, well, first of all, God says to Paul, my grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, I will boast all the more gladly about my weaknesses so that Christ's power may rest on me. And so right there, God is already saying, first of all, like his grace is sufficient enough. So even in the midst of our weaknesses, he is enough. And what I love about weaknesses is in the midst of those, um, those mishaps that we have, our weaknesses, we get to see God's glory shine. Like guys, like I'm, um, if you don't already know, I'm a writer and a blogger and I write so many times about my own weaknesses. And I love it because in the midst of my weaknesses, I get to share what God's done, how God was able to be my strength when I wasn't strong enough, when he was able to speak through me when I felt like I couldn't speak, right? And so in the midst of our weaknesses, acknowledge them because in, the, in that we can really see the hand of God move upon our life. And as we acknowledge our weaknesses, it also reminds us and points us to Christ that he can enable us, right? Philippians says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And so when we acknowledge our weaknesses, it only points to God, which boosts our confidence. And so I hope that um, you guys are starting to see the theme in all these points. It's all pointing to Christ because without Christ, we can't have confidence, right? Like I was saying earlier, the world teaches us to have confidence in ourselves, but we can't rely on ourselves. We're gonna have bad days, but if we want to have unwavering confidence, right, confidence every time, any time, it's only gonna happen through Christ. Now, the last point that I wanted to talk about in regards to boosting our confidence the right way, instead of trying to please people, focus on pleasing God, right? The more we try to focus on pleasing people, we're going to have fear of man. We're gonna start being afraid, oh, what if? what is she thinking? What is he thinking about? And the reality is we can't please everyone, but we can please God. And so we have to focus on what is pleasing God? What has God called me to do? Jesus himself says that his food is to do the will of the Father and to accomplish his assignment. And so guys, that's also our duty is to finish the assignment and the work that God's called us to do, to focus on what pleases him. Because when we understand that we're pleasing and we're doing the will of God, we can have confidence. We no longer have to have fear of what is so-and-so gonna think, right? And start having these fears. And then we start limiting ourselves to walk out the full potential that God has for us. So it's so important that we focus on pleasing the Lord in our assignment from God because ultimately we were all created with a purpose from God. Right, Jeremiah 1.5, God says, before I made you in your mother's womb, I chose you, I set you apart for a special work. And so each of us have a, has an assignment from God. And like I said before, we can't please everyone. And so instead of trying to focus on how to please people, focus on pleasing the Lord and the assignment that he has created you to be. Because the only way to live the most fulfilled life is to live the life that we were created to live. And the only way to live the life we were created to live is to live the life that God has called us to live. And so this fifth point of just focusing on pleasing God and living for Him is so important and building our confidence rightly in the Lord. And so I hope that these five things have helped you guys to be able to learn. I would really recommend that you take these to heart, right? And also practice renewing your mind. Romans 12 talks about how do not be transformed by this world, right? Or sorry, do not conform to the patterns of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. And so it's so important that we renew our minds with truth right? Because the world has what they have to say, but then we have God's truth. And if we want to build and walk out confidence the right way in the Lord, it will require us to continue to renew our mind in his truth. Now, there are more tips that I have for you. However, I want to invite you guys to join a four-week masterclass that I'll be doing on how to have unwavering confidence. Now, in this masterclass, you'll be able to um, be joining alongside other women who will be learning with you. It's going to be done all through online, through Zoom calls, and you'll be able Able to go in depth and learn more of how to have unwavering confidence. Now, in those four weeks, in week one, we'll be um, talking in more depth of what I spoke today on how to have confidence and how to build it the right way and having confidence in the Lord. The second week, we will be talking about, you know, how, you know, what are the lies that we are believing and throwing away those lies and renewing our mind with God's truth. 
The third week, we will be talking about how to live out our confidence, right? What are ways that we can live it out in our families, in our workplaces, in our, in our careers, and where God is placing us at? And the fourth thing that is really important is we are going to learn how to instill unwavering confidence in others. Because guys, when God calls us and when he deposited something in us, he wants us to empower that to others, right? Like God even says, go and make disciples of all nations. And so whatever we have, right, this confidence that we're learning, God wants us to empower other women. And so that fourth week, we're going to be talking about how to do that. And so to sign up, all you have to go is to bit.ly, B-I-T dot L-Y slash unwavering confidence. And there you can sign up and get more details. And so I hope that this has encouraged you. And like I said before, it is possible to have unwavering confidence. And ultimately, it comes through Christ, right? And those five tips that I gave you, all of those, we can see the pattern is to be rooted in Christ and to remember that we cannot sustain our own confidence, but in Christ, we can. In Christ, we are more than conquerors. And in Christ, we can do all things. And so the last verse I wanted to end today is 2 Corinthians 5, 17 to 20. It says, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, the new creation has come, the old has gone, the new is here. All this is from God who reconciled ourselves to himself through Christ and gave us the ministry of reconciliation. So this verse right here, we see that God, when we are in Christ, the old has God and the new has come. And what that means is we get to walk out our new identity in Christ, right? We get to be walking out with the truth of God living inside of us. And that process is us being reconciled to Christ. And I love that last part. It says, and God gave us the ministry of reconciliation. And that's what I was sharing with you guys earlier before is that when God has you know, transform our own lives. He wants us to transform others' lives, right? We all have the ministry of reconciliation, helping others find their identity in Christ. And like what I was saying before, confidence isn't a look. It's our identity in Christ. And so as we walk out this new creation in Christ, we get to carry that ministry and help others walk out that confidence. And so I pray that you ladies are blessed by this and that God will continue to mold you into the woman you are called to be. And I would love to end with prayer. So God, I thank you, Lord, for those who are listening, God. I thank you, Lord, for each and every one of their lives, God, that they are so precious in your sight, God. I pray, Lord, that your truth would just burn in their hearts, God, that you would show them who they are in you, God, that you would show them the beauty, God, that you've given them, God, the gifts and talents, the callings and the assignments that you have placed in their lives, God. And I pray, God, that the lies of the enemy, God, would be completely removed from them, God, that they would start remembering who they are in you, God, Lord, that you would start giving them fresh eyes to see the assignment in them, God. I pray, Lord, if there has been any comparison, God, in their mind, that that would be removed, God, that they would start seeing the right way, that they would start seeing women the other way, that they would start praising and giving giving thanks, God, and seeing the beauty of others, God, and themselves as well, Lord. I pray, God, that they would give, that you would start to continue to build up confidence in them, God, of who they are in you, Lord. I pray, God, that you would just continue, God, to just speak over them, God, your love, God, and who they are, Lord. And God, I pray, Lord, that you would start helping them to just walk out the season with boldness, God, because there's so much that you have for them in this season, Lord. And this is not the time for us, God, to be given to fear, God, to to be sitting back and not stepping out to who you've called us to be in the assignments that you have, God. But Lord, we don't have to feel like we're not good enough, God, because if you called us to the assignment, God, you will empower us, God. So I pray, Lord, that you would remind, God, Lord, the listeners, God, of the assignment you have for them, that you bring clarity in their minds of what you are calling them to do and that they would have the confidence to do it knowing that you are behind it all so i thank you god lord i thank you for each and every person listening in in your name we pray amen so thank you all for listening and i hope that you have a blessed time god bless you